hey, maybe maybe I'm missing something in the Beast Coast lineup. Uh, I mean, obviously they're going for this, so they believe in it. Marcy has an easy time. Tell me something I don't know. Oh wait, Asta <laughs> somehow got it twice in a row for free. Let's see if they can convert that into 2 a victory, which would almost cement their position at the top of the pack at the end of day number two. If Beast Coast can claw back some much needed points. Yeah. As the game starts out here, we see uh, Aster doing that deep smoke around that you talked about in uh, game one that you've seen them uh, do. So cool to see this attempt at first blood. Not really going to connect us. Of course, Beast Coast is on the complete other side of the map. Doing the exact same thing, actually. Just wrapping around. Not as wide as we see Aster. You see what I mean about the tier one to the tier two. And it's a logical plan, but seems like both sides had that feeling they could kill level one. They can maybe get some deep wards down here, though. So that's the upside, at least. Watch out on the mid ramp. There's a banana peel. You could slip. Did you know, um, talking a little bit here, as the team seem to be playing pretty far away from each other, did you know that Monkey King has the highest chance to turn into a courier if he stands on a ramp? Really? The, 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 yep. Yeah, the mischief has the least chance to turn into something else if you are uh, on a ramp. Some specific okay. knowledge right there. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to remember that for my support Monkey King. <laughs> you know, I want to get out of lane quicker. So I'm just going to yeah. come out of my fountain, stand on the ramp, and, and go, no, not yes. Uh, if you're in base, you actually can be next to the couriers and then and you have, guaranteed. I believe, even guarantee. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if you're out on the map, it's a good way to do it. Huh. What if I just want to be a banana? <laughs> well, feel free, my friend. <laughs> I need I need these stat reveals. Like, if I just want to guarantee the banana. A lot of body blocks here, but I think it's going to be fine. Siamis C. Yeah, a lot of damage, but now they're trying to trade for money. Not, not the best of choices, considering one of these is a tiny. The other is also a strength hero. Yeah, but he doesn't really want to stay here forever. Amone is Lost investing a lot of time to just brawl it. Like, this is not farming. Yeah, but he, he can't leave now. He waited so long. Avalanche is available again. So, so Amone is just kind of parked here. Cool. Awkward start yeah. this lane. Freebie for Whisper. Pretty awkward start, actually. All that brawling and uh, wasting a lot of time. Now running back. Gonna TP top. Like, what was the logic there? I am a life stealer. Bwaga said I have an easy game. I'll beat <laughs> everyone. Oh, okay. I mean, he, he didn't feel like he can safely just TP away there, so he wants to try, uh, try and take the trade for a little bit. Ultimately, I think he could have backed out earlier and probably just gone to his lane in a better shape. But the brawl was two heroes for two heroes, so it also kept the Snapfire busy for a while. Yeah, he also forced Gojira to TP back to base, so he's not there for the follow-up wave, so Monet maybe recovers there. Impressive start to the lane for the Monkey King, though. Six CS, four denies already. Yeah, this is a very, very nice CSing by uh, by him. I mean, this this lane will get more and more difficult, I think, over time. At the start, you have a bit of a damage advantage, and Monkey King's last hits are generally really nice. So, uh, nice dodge there. He doesn't get hit by the damage. No, it's, um, it's impressive that he's actually getting the lifesteal off, despite the fact he doesn't even have an oop yet. Yeah, he, he went for early boots. This is a smart itemization on uh, mid monkey that we see as well quite often by monkey players, just making sure they can get close enough. Yeah, meanwhile, on that bot lane, XSS, we'll have to see what he can do in this lane. Some creep shenanigans happening right now. K1 didn't even manage to hook the big creep, so won't be able to insta drag the way back. Yeah, certainly this lane should be Beast Coast favored, I feel, even though there's a Marcy on the lane, that's the crazy thing, but you have to be careful. Stinger getting close. Oh, look at Lord. Oh, there's the save. They can save each other. That's, that's the good news for Beast Coast, right? Both of these heroes can help the other out. Yeah, you certainly need all the protection you can have when you're in the lane against the Broodmother and the Marcy. Top Lich. This is uh, a little bit overwhelming. The creeps definitely given the edge needed. Beast Coast will be the ones to get first blood. Yeah, he, he does go down, but ultimately that's uh, a lot of time that the life steer was just safely farming. Oh my! What? What is this lane? It's just tossing people over people. Cookies, dispose. You don't know if you're coming <laughs> or going. But right now, Marcy's the one going to the fountain. It's the circus tryouts on this lane. <laughs> Who else do we need in this lane? Can we get Tiny down here? Come on, we've got to really amp this up. That's true, actually. They can throw people around as well, even better. Lich, of course, dying. Comes back with full mana. His mangles ready as well, so he's just starting to lay in these uh, Frost Blasts. Trying to take some good trade against Tiny. And is the Tiny's goal to kind of reach a point where he can just leave? Do you think the Beastmaster reaches a stage where he can be alone on this lane? 
not quite in this lane. I think he's going to have to stay here for a while. Mid, we see a bit of uh, attention over a Monkey King. And found him. They can lift back into a stun. Ori's pumping it. He's trying to oh, force he's... the Duke out. And oh, wow, that hesitation. It means that Smile's able to get away. And instead, Baboka's going to be the one going down. So looks like they didn't want to sync up for an insta stun off the Dispose. Missed the opportunity. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation there. Or it could maybe have just, you know, landed a Lightning Storm along with Dispose, and then he wouldn't really be moving at all, landed a stun on that. But again, good dodge uh, by Monkey King, dodging with the Mischief, the damage. Oh, cool. get killed done. Though. Yeah, so Gajira, that, that, that's expected to happen though, right? Once the life dealer comes running, if you haven't got every tool in your arsenal ready, the, there's no way a Tiny gets away. He's also just been taking, like, overtime damage by Lich continuously throwing his harass at him. Mm -hmm. Like, nice pull denied by the Lich. Uh, overall, a little bit of a CS check here. Broodmother is actually number one in CS, and that surprises me. I thought that she would be having a harder time in bottom lane, especially with Marcy going to bottle refill on mid. But he's getting good farm here. Yeah, I think the, the initial death on the Marcy is, like, deceptive of how that started. She was drawing a lot of attention, and Brew got past the hardest phase. What a spree. Speaking of that, Marcy, she has now arrived in the top lane. Whisper has nowhere to go but home. Home in a box. It's so difficult to survive those rotations. I feel like out of all the games that I've watched with so many Marcy's, I think the general like five minute gank rotations have about an 80% success rate or something at least. Like, well, once she connects on something, it's just out of position. You know, you get stunned first, pulled back, and you're too deep. Wherever you are, if you're an off laner, mid laner, everybody is in danger for this. It feels like that person, that, that like, like old grizzly teacher hitting you and going, you're doing it wrong. It's like, you're not even teaching me. It's like, how do I do it right? It's like, the life lesson is there is no way of doing it right. It's a Marcy. <laughs> you're here to suffer. <laughs> you're right. You're wrong even when you're right, you know? Yeah. Something nice going on for Beast Coast now, though, is that they're going to have this Vanguard complete on Pudge. So he'll be able to solo against the, the Broodmother much better. That frees up a bit of rotations for them. So Stinger coming towards mid. And that has been the difference as well. Marcy's been able to participate. We saw the rotation towards mid that didn't work out, then the one towards top. Snapbar can definitely have a, a similar impact. Not as absurd, but offers up a stun, offers up some control. Yeah, and she can also counter gank in a great way. If Marcy tries to gank something, Snapfire coming in. Oh, top, we might see a rotation on Beast. Kajira interrupts Baboka, but he's still able to pursue forward. Cookie will get them out of the jam, but Baboka sticks him right back in. At Lich, however, does go down first, and now C Smile is here to punish Asta. Lifestealer, no way to get away. Doesn't have six, so can't infest. Instead, that's going to be a healthy kill for the Monkey King. Fantastic punishment there by Beast Coast. So, yeah, now because Pudge is very self sustaining on the bottom lane, this frees up these reactions, and they're not really even losing anything during it. They can't try punch bottom, but this would be difficult. Or maybe it won't be. Broodmother maybe, level maybe 6. Not. Oh, he just got 6. Dismember, but nice interruption. Baboka was holding him to dispose just in case. And the only downside is you get this kill, but I was about to say, Ori's build doesn't allow them to punish by taking towers when Beast Coast rotates. It's a no diabolic edict build. Going for the third point in Lightning Storm. This is very unorthodox way of playing Leshrac. I haven't seen this at all. Uh, like, oh. in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, typically you want the double eat it quickly just to erase towers, but no, apparently he just wants the magical damage. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, super damage, though. Getting beat down. Even the creeps are joining in. <laughs> yeah. Sad part is maybe he would have lived if those creeps weren't hitting him, but the frost shield makes it so that the neutral creeps got angry at him. <laughs> Why are you trying to make us cold? It's already hard enough to pay for my heating bills. Yeah, well, he, he paid, paid in blood for... Lowering the, the <laughs> electricity right there. <laughs> Electric, Ori. Right. Just trying to surge forward with a little bit of farm here. But you can see, Sea Smile's relentless, actually. He's just hunting it. Should a Monkey King really build, uh, be this free to go that deep? No, I don't think so, but he's having a good impact. I mean, he does have a ward from Snapfire from before, so he's uh, enjoying his vision here. But overall, Sea Smile's having a pretty fantastic showing. Hop rune, the haste. He's gonna get it. Nope. No chance that Ori can get the stun in time. Give me a high five. Come on, you gotta admit. That, He's dying. That was some skill. Okay. Final tap. And he has got final strike. He realizes that this is a bit too much, though, even with a haste. 
Yeah, you see that quick glyph there? That stopped some of the healing from uh, Monkey King. So the glyph up mm -hmm. the creeps, he doesn't get extra lifesteal from uh, damaging the creeps. It's a good five hit play against Monkey King. Anytime you see him like getting Jingu and about to stun, time that glyph, you can outplay him. Uh, good identification there. See, that's why I got Wagger here. That's why we're paying the big bucks. <laughs> I was going to be LOL, didn't get a kill with a haste. Oh, LOL, gonna get a kill bot. Stinger. Oh, it turns into a double stun. K1. Sinister Gaze is gonna interrupt his fun time to dismember, but it looks like they just want out. Dispose will get them far enough away, but Boca needs to retreat, but all spells on cooldown. Just have to leave the supports behind. Simi C will be found by Smile. Uh, Boca is fast enough as well as just charging away here, being chased oh, by the tiny. He's even going back for the bounty. <laughs> Like, it's actually funny. We talked about Bane looking so slow no matter how fast he is. Look how fast Baboka looks when limping away. Oh, he's oh. not fast enough now, though. The shotgun. Right I find face. shotguns do slow people down. Yeah, bullets are faster than the Marcy confirmed. <laughs> Damn, that's quite the challenge, judging by the anime. Ice Frog getting an idea for how to buff Marcy for next patch. Yes, yes, bullet speed. Make her <laughs> rotate a little bit faster. I, I thought you could go with getting an idea of how to nerf her. There's just like a cinematic where she gets shot in the kneecaps. Like, that'll stop her <laughs> moving. Yeah, well, I, I heard your ideas about the sending Disco Pony to a glue farm. Yeah. Hey, man, you were on board. You were straight with my DMs. Like, yes, yes! Valve <laughs> should hire you, KP. He definitely said that part. Uh, the, this is all fabrication, by the way, chat. <laughs> Wait until you get to my lore time where I start questioning everything. Like, why would you oh, want to eat this spider, K1? Why would you think you could eat this spider? Oh, nice interruption, Kajira! XXS was mid animation with the spawn spider links. Yeah, that was fantastic timing to arrive there, and he's gonna save his friend DD Rune on Monkey King, looking for maybe more than just saving, maybe a kill potential. Saving XXS from a torturous life being a giant spider. Cut him off. Avalanche is ready. I'll slow him down enough. I'll be able to get in range for the toss before the spiders can intercept. Balance strike through now. And Baboka trying to save the day. And he comes in clutch into an attempted double stun. But C Smile on point with a dodge out. Sinister Gaze follow up looks good. Nori chooses to go for the easy kill on the Gojira while the rest of the team chases the Monkey King. Looks like he should be able jump? to leap into the tree, though. Tree dance just in time. Wow, so many clutch saves in this game is really nice. First the save on the Pudge and then also that Marcy coming in to just barely stop them and keep the Broodmother alive. But in the end, Monkey stays alive. I think that's the big story right there. I don't know, it's an exciting game so far. You know, we talked about the saves that the bot lane had themselves. The Monkey King just saved himself. Tiny as well. There's just so many elements of clutch save in this game on both sides, actually. Yeah, I'm impressed so far by what Beast Coast are doing. I mean, they're they're having very big impact from the monkey mid against Leshak. I did not expect he would be 4-0 at this stage of the game and just looking pretty fantastic overall. Seasma certainly impressing me with this gameplay here. Yeah. No, I'm still going to try and impress with the smoke rotation. Infest straight away into the creep. What made you think that you could have this sent off for free? Looks like he's quick to disengage, so a little bit paranoid about the primal rule. Meanwhile, bot lane, they tried to pounce upon XSS. Wraparound coming in, Gojira, he snipes out the Vlads. And XSS will try to quickly make his way out, but nice setup. K1 able to drag him back to his death. There are so many repositioning things here. You get hooked back, you get, you know, uh, the toss back as well, and all the disabled from the Monkey King and the Avalanche as well. Difficult for him to get out there on uh, Broodmother, but that is a lot of time create uh, time and space created here. And while the Lifesteer is behind the Pudge and Farm, not having quite as much uh, net worth right now, it is a hard counter matchup. I think Lifestealer's game is going to be very important. Definitely, yeah. you know, it's the type of hero that, that can potentially be counted out by the Monkey King. The Monkey King isn't going to have a free game. You can see, like, farm-wise, the mids are actually doing the worst out of all the cores in this game. Yeah, he's going for a good itemization though in this game as well. It seems like he, he wants to go for that mage there. Possibly gonna go for the Echo Saber first and then later on turning in. Yeah, mm -hmm. it seems like, like he's gonna go for the, uh, the Echo Saber, then disassemble for BKB, and then make a Mage Slayer out of it down the road on uh, Monkey, which is a really good, uh, good way to get maximum value. Yeah, I love this detail of Ori as well. Sometimes we see Lestrat go in for the, the full hood, but he just, just chose to go for a casual cloak and rush the Bloodstone instead. Yeah, Bloodstone is beyond busted on Leshrac right now. Ever since it was buffed to not cost HP to activate, and they also buffed the lifesteal even more, the spell lifesteal. 
uh, I think trying to get it as soon as possible is very important. I'm um, pretty close with the Stormstormer over on the side of Entity, who's runs a lot of Leshrac, and he seems to prioritize just getting the Bloodstone ASAP. Yeah, I've seen sometimes they go for the Hood of Defiance if they're under a lot of pressure, and at least I respect the fact he went for the Cloak because of what he's up against. The Tiny, the, the Pudge, plenty of heroes that can burst you down magically. Good read here by Whisper, and he stays around in the area as well. Dodges the gank, but he wants Come to turn back. it around. Uh, I don't think he can. <laughs> He's a dreamer if he thinks that's going to work. I mean, a little bit ambitious, but I respect the, the moxie, you know? The feel that you want to yeah. go. Well, he, he did have Snapfire behind. Oh, Again, the haste oh. rune, not denied. And he used the stun already. So, smile. He will back off. Does force a TP rotation, but Ori is playing with fire here. Oh, the hook! It spots Sami C out. Easiest kill of his game. Rebound. Hop onto two. Toss back as well to dispose, but they can't get the stun follow up out. C Smile still has the haste run, and Gojira will pay the price though. Yeah, big stuns here. Tiny is gonna go monkey. down, but oh, the monkey the haste. Kisses. They're in. Ori's gone. Primal Roar makes sure he can't even leave, and that's also now gonna secure the tower. Yeah, they're bringing in K1 as well. I like this. Everybody coming in line on the side of Beast Ghost trying to activate. I mean, Punch not really going to get too much done here, but it's the idea that matters that they're playing towards each other and playing with much more aggressive intent than we saw last game. They also have prepared a lot of big stacks here, so going to stack it one more time. Punch is going to get some massive farm here on the on the big camp. Mm -hmm. Getting very close to Axe now. Just about 1,400 gold away. Which stage... Life still, uh, if you can't get a lot done in the rage, I know you said he's a counter to the Pudge, but it, it comes down to the idea that rage allows you to be. But if the fights go on longer than that, can Life still even stay in the fight against the Pudge? He can. It depends a lot on like how many disables we're gonna see coming out. But yeah, you, you still you still have to be fearful on Pudge, but definitely gonna stop a lot of the healing coming out of the rage. But the damage is still very high. Definitely, and of course the the other big element is if you look at the timings, Ori. By the time he completes the Bloodstone, K1's probably going to be... Yep, he's already there. Ags has been completed for the Pudge. Good yeah, luck, have fun. A bit. Oh, this is Member, though. That's a little bit deep. Cookie to try and get him out of the mess. Ori whiffs the stun in pretty deep, but the full-up damage good. Chain Frost spooking him. K1 now gone. Gajira not achieving much of the rotation except Lich from feeding more gold. And the Lich ulti bounces to smile. That's going to force him to commit the Wukongs, but it's too late. Without a team to turn around, it's not going to achieve anything but giving more gold to Asta. Oh my god, he just uses this member when they go on him there. That was like the worst possible timing for the Pudge. He is tanky, he stays alive for a long time, but he didn't have ulti to, to try and do something. So just kind of gets brought down by the overwhelming amount of spells. And that Lich ulti bouncing over there was very fortunate how it connected to the monkey at the end as well. I mean, you know, unfortunate if you're on the side of Beast Coast. And I'm starting to wonder if this delayed pulling of the trigger by Asta was intentional. Because we mentioned early on about the Diabolic Edict not being leveled. Ori has it maxed out now. And you saw Monet rotate. He participated after the armor. So, so I'm wondering if they didn't want to aggress early on for these towers because they were scared of Beast Coast's presence. Yeah, I'm honestly not quite sure the, uh, the the Lightning Storm instead of the Edict, but here we see a little bit of a replay for how that fight went down. Punch staying alive. Imagine if he had this member there to be able to try and turn around and do something, like heal himself. Oh god, meanwhile, there's already more kills in the mid lane. No tower here to get quick rotations in. Snapfire already gone. See Small arrives just in time to watch his teammate die. Yeah, all of Beast Calls are trying to get something moving towards mid. Meanwhile, bottom is being... Assaulted a bit here by the Leshrac as he has his uh, Edict ready. They yeah, want to fight mid as well though. Not gonna lie, this Axe has a feeling of, I have Axe fight me in. Oh, oh the, tree! the tree! They cut it down, but nice save. K1 will get him away. Monet is still hunting though. They'll pull one back. Chain Frost is not gonna play ping pong this time, but they'll still find a kill on his tiny. Whisper, he's forced to commit the Primal Roar. They have to go in, but the stun connects on the K1. He needs to dismember a target. Goes for the bug. Room Mother is going to go down, but party time for Ori with the Bloodstone running. Kisses should be enough to overwhelm, but not before he takes K1 and C Smile with him. Okay, so still pretty good trade for Aster trying to chase for something more was Marcy, but not going to get it. There was a bit of Miss Micro there, by the way, that, that ended up costing them a little bit. The uh, Wraith Pact wasn't immediately sent over to the fight by Broodmother. And when she was going down there, she was like trying to slide the Wraith Pact over to the fight, <laughs> but she forgot about it a little bit there at the start of the fight. It could have been there, and I think it could at least have tried to save Leshrac there before he went down in there. 
Yeah, you see the Bloodstone, you know, it's very powerful. There is a way to still overwhelm, but it feels like things have to line up perfectly at Beast Ghost. I, I know that was them recovering the second part of that fight, but you see the threat. If the Snapfire is on the backside, if she gets these kisses off, they do have a way of killing the Disco Pony. Yeah, there you see for a little moment how the Wraith Pact is not moving and chasing along with Brood, because Brood is like diving after on the replay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh no, oh no, not again. Siamese C in the game. He, he is eyeing up Gojira here, just hunting after him. It's like, where you going, buddy? No blink dagger? Yeah. Oh, it'd be a shame if someone kept you away from that for longer! Oh no, let me leave. Yeah, you get leave in a body bag, buddy. Yeah, he tosses away the Marcy, then tries to run, popping out the pig pole, but gets pulled back in. And in the end, it just ends up being more beneficial as Ori is the one to get the last hit. Yeah. He probably wishes he had the old Bloodstone, though, where you gain charges every time that you killed mm. something, you know? Mm. Get a bit of gains. So, I don't... <laughs> because of how absurd it is on just one hero, I don't necessarily like the new Bloodstone, but I like that they tried to move away from that concept. Yeah? You didn't like it? I feel like it's the type of item... Like, it's cool because it, it is playing to win. It's a snowball-type item. But it also... It, you get to a stage where it's like, oh, I've died once, and, and my game kind of felt ruined, Radiant's right? Yeah, that, that's true, I guess. I'm just a sucker for scaling. I like anything that, you know, continuously gets stronger and stronger. Uh, anything like that in the game, I'm just immediately hooked. So Bloodstone oh, building up, that was my jam. But right Maybe now... Maybe it's the idea of the, the, the fact that, like, just one mistake lost you everything, it felt like, a lot of the time, Bloodstone, right? Yeah, they did bring it down to only being, like, three three charges lost there for a while as well. That's true. But, um, but then honestly, the too game good. is now slowly, like, stabilizing. And Aster feel like they're regaining the control that they didn't have there on the back of the last team fight. Now with the Desolator in hand, building towards the Sanji Asha on the Lifestealer. I think he's becoming very, very strong. And uh, yeah, the, the BKB for Lashrak is going to be a huge timing as well when he gets that. And K1's also going towards BKB, so maybe an answer to Lashrak. But the, the problem is, like, even if you go and dismember, if anyone comes to back you up, they're going to be saving the Lashrak. And Kajira, we've been here before, but this time the outcome is different. Pigpole does save him. Yeah, he manages to just scurry his way out of there. A little, little rock not getting found by the Lich. <laughs> it's kind of outrageous, you know, if there was a pig squealing that loud, I feel like I should be able to hear it. <laughs> Pigpole should have a nerf. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I like how the game lags when you use uh, a, a good nuke on uh, Broodmother Spiders. That's how you know you land and connected your your good God's Rebuke or your Bounded Strike or whatever. The game just freezes for a uh, for a few, a few frames there. This is there's something about spawn and spiderlings that just like it leads to some of the funnest plays. And that one of my other favorite ones is before you have Maelstrom on a, an Ember and you slight fist, you're like, well, I can just actually get up and do some stretches now because uh, I'm not going to be back for a while. <laughs> if you click slight fist on the on the spawn spiderlings, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gone for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that, that can take a ridiculous amount of time. Pudge, Pudge? getting caught oh. out. Oy, oy, oy. He, I mean, if he is yeah. dismember, like, it's going to be interrupted straight away. Reinforcements are coming. Kisses to follow through. Primal Roar, but Lashrak! Prime time to kick the BKB into action. K1's going to go down. They're going to lose the big creep, and Beast Coast need to retreat fast. Monkey with the ulti. Drops it. Stun onto two. Lashrak's in pretty deep here. Disposed to try and interrupt him, but BKB activated. Monkey can just stand his ground, but the life's still coming out. The save from the life stealer himself. Infest bomb out, they'll get rid of the tiny, and now they stun the Monkey King out of the tree. See Smile called for a re-engagement, but he should have called for a disengage. Yeah, that was a nice attempt there. They had a good combination with the Monkey ulti and the Boundless Strike into the Avalanche. That was a long amount of stun, but the Infest conveniently saving both the Lifestealer and the Leshrac at the same point in time there. So, Lifestealer gets to safety and Leshrac gets buffed up. and. A Bloodstone Lash already so hard to bring down when Lifestealer also goes in and heals him. That's insane. You see the, the immediate catch there. Catching Pudge was really fortunate for them. Yeah, the, the timing In the game, well. they're trying to steal Roche, but uh, not going to be. Nah, no chance. Instead, they might actually feed over a few extra kills. Sting has been found. Been instantly in by the Marcy. Hook somehow missing miraculously, as it has been doing a lot recently. I'll keep hunting. Looks like they might not be able to find a target, but with an Aegis on their hands, they can easily look to take a lot of objectives. <laughs> I like how you say Hook misses miraculously. Like, it's just, wow, it managed. <laughs> it, it did it on, it, it's not even related to a player. It just has a will of its own, and yeah, yeah, it, it happened to go that way. I'll use does. that in my games from now on. Yeah, exactly, Wagga. Like, 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 anytime I miss a Hook, it's, it's not me. It's, it's like the Hook has a mind of its own, okay?
It certainly does. Like the ward here by Gojira. He places a ward and stays in an aggressive position. But Baboka is already walking in there too. With the sentry and the ward. Okay, get out, get out fast. They know. Ray Tremone. Squeal, little piggy. Squeal like a piggy. Full stuff to get him out. Prime are always defensive. And now, now you don't have great defensive tools. They're going to toss back in onto Baboka. But that is not a fight you want to take. Kisses well, comes out. Smile. Needs to retreat. They do get the supports, but they will not get more. Oh, they they're playing though, they're chasing. Smile needs to be careful. Monet's gonna commit to this. Gets the Wukong down, but he's just gone! Oh boy. That, that is not what you needed to have happen there. See, Smile, this is a little bit like the mid turnaround with the monkey ulti there. Just getting a bit greedy for more, trying to trying to make the most out of uh, you know a bad situation. But good reactions by Aster. Overall, this Lifestealer and Leshrac both are starting to feel like absolute monsters. It's scary as well with the way this has escalated. I mean, this game started off very even. Now 6k net worth lead for Asta. And you know, of course, all games start off even. But the, the point to get to is how this lead is built. It, it feels like Beast Ghost, every time, even when they take an initial good trade, they're that greedy kid at the table is like, I know this was my share of the cake, but I really want another slice. And that extra slice, you know, in real life, that'll lead to obesity and maybe a, a blocked vein. But in this game, it's just leading to a loss in these fights. Yeah. Uh, well, they have some light here coming up, which is that they have BKB now finished up on Pudge. So he's going to be able to do much more in the team fights and be a little bit unstoppable. Because currently they have controlled him really greatly with all their slows and disables. I mean, Pudge really hasn't been able to move around in the fights. But now this allows him to more freely pick his targets, get full channels on the dismember, and Aster might not be as dominant in the team fights going on forward. Let's see. They feel confident with the Aegis still in their hands. Monet is caught out though. First life will be gone. He has got the race to work with when he comes back up. K1 zoning everyone away with the BKB, but not able to grab a hold of anyone right now. He needs to get out of here. What an escape. Now they're going to look to pursue in. Infest bomb out. K1 in trouble. Has got the dismember, but too much lockdown. BKB already used. That's your POS1 dead right outside of your base. And Monet is not going to stop. Good lord. He's going to take oh out the snap fire. Control of the Gujira. He can't even react. Brood with the BKB running away, staying safe, and disengage clean, disengage after forcing a buyback as well by a Snapfire. That was a bit of a misplay there, by the way. They tried to bring down the Lifestealer who had Aegis, and it's a nice thing to try and bring him down. But after he respawned with the Aegis, they stuck around with the Granite Golem too yeah. close. He just infested that, used that as a little taxi to get out to safety, and then turned the fight around again. And all this was while Pudge was trying to buy time for his team, but, you know, he ended up just not allowed to you do anything during his BKB duration. Yeah, this is the worst case scenario, because even, even if he just runs away with it, at the end he screams, I like gold, and rips out of you, your golem. Monet, well, his commitment towards the tier 2 forces out of Wukong's, a Wukong's that is not going to net any kills for Beast Coast. Costly. They do have Vision here with the Hawks. Jump in. Marcy went in deep. Trying to bait them in a little here. Ori's wrapping around now. They're out of position all of a sudden. Beastmaster gets caught here. No problem roar for eight seconds. See Smile trying to chase down with the BKB, which means he's going to have to leave K1 behind to die. Gajira next to hit the deck, and Beast Coast, they've reached a point where they don't know what to do anymore. All they can try to do is fight, but every fight is getting worse and worse. I mean, part of this is that they're behind in net worth, but a big part of this is just also the, the heroes that are matching up against each other. All their heroes have to go in, and Leshrac is enjoying this so much. He did tremendous damage in that fight. Uh, just, you know, run in and suddenly have four heroes right next to you. That's the dream. What Leshrac doesn't like is a hero like Sniper or something that sits far back, but here it can deal damage to everyone at once. The dream is when it's near a tree line and they walk right past you, right? It's like, oh, great. Now I can just get in the, the middle of all five of you. I didn't even need a blink dagger this game. And oh my I, god, if I'm monkey king! Chase in. He gets back in the trees, though. Asta were not expecting to fish an MK kill at that point. Beast Ghost dodging death there because that kill would have inevitably led to a second lane. Yeah, that was interesting. So I guess even though you cut the tree when you rebound in, you actually don't get the full tree stun on Monkey King uh, as though the tree died because oh, you really? get the uh, the Marcy stun duration. So it's only 2.1 seconds. They didn't have enough time to re-engage there after seeing that, oh, we actually found him. Got it. So what you're saying is Monkey King's more less about Marcy's than Primal Beasts. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> Oh, they want to fight. Beast Coast, desperate. They see him. They're going to chase him. Monet. 
You can see how confident he is right now. He's like, let me at everyone in this game. XSS is wasting so much of their time as well. Love the Wraith Pack totem on the high ground. <laughs> the high ground. <laughs> it's like, you can't touch me. They're going to find it in the end over the sentry. This Let's is just coming in. Yeah, they're on both sides. Ori, get to try to come from the north, south side. They're going to find Snapfire straight away. K1, BKB, we've been here before. Dismember's going to come out. Bondo is support. Wukong gets committed, Prime will throw it out, but Beastmaster now dead. C Smile has to carry it all. Monet now get the lifesteal out, sustains off a of K1, does go down. But Monkey King versus the world, the world is gonna crush you, son. I love Mars is just using her Ogre Seal totem, charging off into the distance there while they're still bringing down Monkey King. Feels like disrespect almost going on, but yeah, Aster are completely in control of this game at this point. Beast Coast, I. I love how they're not a team that, you know, goes down and just, oh, we, we can't go fight. It's scary to go in there. They have absolutely no hesitation. They charge in. It doesn't look like the best situation, but they, they just go for it. And if you're already this far behind, I, I completely admire that mentality because too many teams are just, you know, slowly accepting the loss by trying to stay safe. Oh, I agree. Especially on this channel. We've just seen teams get 40, 50, 60, even a 70k net worth lead at one stage. And it's off the back of, of this, almost this dwindling hope, like, oh, it's TI, you know, maybe they'll make a mistake. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll accidentally click on our fountain instead of their own. And it, it's rarely ever the case that that turnaround comes. You have to yeah, seize you, the opportunity. You can't really be praying for that power outage when you're sitting in the same building. After all, it's not going to come and save you. Um, but Aster, yeah, they're, they're just looking so damn strong now the leshrak is having the freest game of his life he's 12 2 and 10 and ever since he got his shivas and bkb bloodstone like he is not dying beast Coast are trying to burst anyone in the fights they're focusing broodmother a lot but they're not addressing the big issue the leshrak is just dominating uh spiders <laughs> spider ate the hook yep <laughs> that ruined the combo oh man it's so infuriating actually like, xss is to one of those type of micros the outside of almost crashing your PC with these these Monkey King stuns, will spread the spider out just to stop these skill shot heroes, as we just saw there. Yeah, every every single play. Oh no, Tiny is getting caught. Well, that's just gonna be Tiny going down. Every single Broodmother player has to use the setting, the Dota selection groups uh, false setting, so you can use the tab and quick quick switch. Mm. It's a uh, it's a setting in the console, and then after that you can do easy micro. Hodge. Yeah, you better be KB. Even that might not be enough though for Puka. Goes fishing for Stinger instead, and there's a Sinister Gauge just before he can get out. The cookie jump, he's gone. And in fact, did, did, wait, did he catch him mid cookie and then it's, because he cookied himself, I, right? I think he pulled him back, yeah. I think he pulled him out of the cookie. Cookie can be disrupted if you uh, get force moved. Yeah, but it's the fact that Glob goes through. Prime Royal. I don't know about this one. I, guys, I really don't know about this one. Pudge is gone. Smile. Or he's holding the BKB. He's not even using it. You're trying to kill this Lashrak. It just doesn't work anymore. Maybe the fountain can turn it about. Nope, he'll walk that one off too. Oh, Hook it back in. If he turns on the life still though. Oh. Right, so he can die. We know he how to uh, beat Lashrak. We have found a solution. Just stick him in the fountain. Okay, it's complete disrespect here. <laughs> Monet is just diving in. Then maybe things better of it. Oh, they're going in now. This member's going to come out. Need an interruption, and there it is. Jumping from Boboka. Cookie stun turn around, but Monet is going to stand his ground. Infest bomb out. And with that heal mitigation removed, it's party time. Gajira is going to be dropped, and credit where credit is due. Beast Coast have not called GG until now. It is finally over. Asta with one of the most brutal beatdowns I have seen on another team yeah. in the groups. Come completely dominating the first game was a 22 minute win second game a 32 minute win it did look for quite a while there like maybe on the back of c smile and his great laning stage and his impressive gameplay overall that they could find a way into this uh mid game in a decent shape but bit by bit it just felt like this is starting to get worse and worse for beast coast their heroes honestly i i don't think they matched out very well against aster at all i think they did better than they did in the first game though and honestly perhaps if they if they played at the level they played now, but with the 